Hello, people. Welcome to another edition of Friday Night Knives here on A Dose of Drew. Tonight, we're looking at the Artisan Cutlery Tylos, a Mallory design. In case you didn't recognize the design language, S35VN, marbled carbon fiber, and milled titanium. Pretty interesting. All right. First things first, let's get some... Standard measurements, see what they say off oh, there. Little over three, about three and a quarter inches when it comes to overall blade length to the scale and about three and an eighth sharpened. With a fairly decent, they definitely went way past the plunge line and it's a fairly deep sharpening trail, which is nice. Overall is about seven and a quarter. Not a bad set of specs. And speaking of specs, where did, where did Andrew put? All right. That's pretty much an eighth of an inch. All right, let's go to another spot. Within five, within five ten thousandths, one point two five. So eighth of point one two five, eighth of an inch. Now let's get right behind the top of the silver. It's about twenty one twenty thousandths. There we go. No, oh, that's not it. There we go. 17 or 18 thousandths behind the edge when done. Get another measurement just to be sure. 19. 19 thousandths behind the edge. Not the narrowest thing ever, but not bad. There's definitely, there's over 20. It's not the thinnest behind the edge, but it's also got a fairly good grind that goes a long ways along there. So it's you know, a narrower, a, a shallower angle can make it ride up further the blade. So it'll be a little bit thicker behind the edge where that angle is. But you have a better secondary bevel angle. We'll check that in some other time. 2.6 ounces. Very, very light. Very light weight. And it has the bolster which is kind of nice. We'll get back to that in a minute here. Do some quick referential. It's the Spider Coat Sandwich, Paramilitary 2. See if we can't line up the front of those choils. Lots of hand space for the size. Lots of blade length for the handle length. Again, handle length is similar to the Paramilitary Para 3 Lightweight. Blade length is similar to the Para 2, Paramilitary 2. Got to remember that Paramilitary 2 is the name of that one and Para 3 is the name of the other one officially. All right, and it's just a blur. Very good hand space for blade length on the Tylos here. Very, very nice. And not just any leak, but a random leak. Let's bring this back down. Always have, always got to remember, let me see. All right, got to keep it below that. All right. So as you can see, again, lots of hand space, but hand space that's slightly larger, maybe just, or maybe equal to the leak here, more blade length. Or similar blade length, little bit less to the blur, but a little bit more hand space, depending on how you look at it, while being a smaller, lighter form factor. Very interesting combination here. This this gives kind of this long, lean uh, styling, but it, it, it provides a lot. And the bug out, again, similar size. It's right in that middle, which is a fantastic EDC size. Let's let's be real. It's similar hand space to the Civivi Elementum, but more blade. Similar blade to the Benchmade bug out, but a little more hand space. Right, it has a little bit more of certain things than a lot of really good EDC knives. And as you can see, it might be slightly longer, but my Wienar is girthier. All right. 
Let's talk about this design, a Mallory design. I'm a fan of the Mallory designs. I don't always like all of them, but they're almost always great. It's almost always, it's, it's very, very good in a saber grip. In fact, it's, his design tends to really favor that, but it's, it's, I've noticed it's not usually at the expense of something like a pinch grip or an overhand or even the scoring style stuff. You know, where you're, you're doing a draw cut. Oh my goodness, stand up. You're doing a draw cut. And you're able to get plenty with that belly and that angle. You're able to get plenty of of space for your fingers as you go in, and and you can do it in a pinch grip. You can do it in a an overhand back, the three fingered you know paintbrush of death here. Very very good opening packages. The saber grip goes in. It's able to go through the uh, reverse grip, the inverted grip which is great for stabbing down. Very, very nice. Keeps the tip basically right in line from thumb all the way down one straight line between the pivot, the thumb, and the tip, which is nice. There we go, it's on screen, so you go straight through. So there's one line of force that essentially goes from where my thumb is down to the tip, which keeps it in line, makes it relatively easy to use. And also with the envelope eviscerator grip, where you have this you know sort of backwards grip, it's very, very useful. It has a nice little spot where the finger goes. It, it keeps a nice pinch grip here. And you can also do sort of the, the thumb to really give it some control. Very, very good in all of those. The, and the lots of blade length could be a little bit longer. You could maybe give up a little hand space or get a little more blade length out of it. But for a front flipper, which by the way, the front flipper is not my favorite part. It is easily the opening uh, relief there. It is way, way more. The ball bearings in the pivot, as you can see, the, the action is pretty smooth and hydraulic. It's not completely, it's not going to drop on your finger. But it is very controllable. Really, really nice action. Centering is pretty solid. This is after testing use. For those who don't know, I do test all of these. I have cardboard i have some paper i i do test and i i do what i can't i cut things that don't need to be cut just so i can make sure i use them i think there's a few people who understand what i'm saying uh, which speaking of if you can hear this yeah it'll go through fast very smoothly um, and it'll go through slow all the way from uh, all the way from heel to tip. So the entire thing's apexed and edged quite nicely. From the factory, no stropping. That's really nice. It has this. It seems like a modified sheep's like a sheep's cliff or worn foot. You know, not really sure how I would. I would try. I would put this more in the worn foot category than the sheep's cliff. Um, but it does have a little bit of both. It's not quite symmetrical down the right down the blade when you look down at it it's not quite a well it's a little bit but it's not it, it, it it's not down the midline it is if you angle it a little bit but it's almost a spear point but there is a little bit more of a dip on the top belly all that sort of thing it's kind of an interesting blade shape that is very very good at doing edc stuff it is most definitely a package piercer, oops, a saran wrap slicer, a cardboard carver, and an envelope eviscerator extraordinaire. And the aesthetics of it are not bad. It looks like a useful tool. It looks knifey while still looking like a tool. I, I really like that about uh, Dylan Mallory's designs. He has, I, I like his design language. There's some things I don't always like, but he, he has a very good design language and it's fairly distinctive, the sort of long and lean. And it does its job well. It, it's, you know, the, the mechanics of it are pretty good on the action. The single complaint I have is that right there. Let me see if I can. Nice plus, perfect. So let's see. See that lip where the carbon fiber hits the uh, bolster? That is something that gets caught on. 
and it is easy to hit that if you're not looking, trying to do it in one hand, instead of the actual lock bar. Or have that carbon fiber get in the way because you're kind of pushing right here and you hit the carbon fiber more than that. It's possible to, it's not a huge deal. The biggest problem is that there is a corner right there that can catch. And it is some of the thinnest part of the carbon, it's strong, carbon fiber strong, but it's some of the thinnest part of the carbon fiber and it's sort of a lip over corner that's there ready to catch. And I have my reservations about the longevity of that particular piece. Catching on something and eventually breaking, making for a not so pretty knife. Considering how aesthetically it is, I love the shredded carbon fiber. All right. And actually, this is this is actually the marbled. Right? It, it is matte. For those who don't know, this is marbled. And this is much like the shredded, right? This is OSB. <laughs> This is MDF swirlied, all right? It's, there's a difference. And I believe this one from the swirly patterns is indeed the marbled carbon fiber. The machine titanium is nice. It goes really thin. It has this... There's the art of the color on it. It has this nice titanium backspacer. Very, very well set. There's some inset screws underneath the bolstering, but uh, pretty easy to take apart. The... the uh, Screw for the pocket clip is inside, which makes for a very interesting take apart, I have to admit. Um, but yeah, this is this is really nice. Uh, and that's kind of where I'm getting the noteworthy points. This pretty much only comes in the higher end S35 with Micarta or Titanium. There's not really a like a, a 154cm version of this knife, which is probably my single both both biggest complaint and a, a noteworthy point this is a dylan this is a high-end knife s35 vn titanium carbon fiber you got good steel it's not inexpensive but it's not cheap when it comes to it its intended purpose as an edc monster is something it does very well it is an extraordinary uh, EDC knife. This blade shape is very, very useful for most everything. It's a high, it, it comes right up, the grind actually comes right up to the top of the opening hole. It's not a full flat grind. It's actually a very high grind. You just can't see the stop until like right here, where the top of that opening hole right up until here is actually flat and not swedged. It is rounded, but there's a, there's a couple of different angles. So it's flat on the top and then comes in, which quite honestly is really nice for this in that this is just slightly narrower in the top, which gives you a very positive action. But it really does do that EDC roll outstandingly well. Um, I'm not, I hate front flippers on camera, but there we go. Uh, all right, so, and the cost, which brings us to the cost evaluation. This is a $200 knife. High-end material titanium is a pain to machine. It's very high quality. It's executed very well. The design is well thought out. But the cost is also relatively high. Now, subjectively, if this is the kind of knife and if this is one of those things where it fits your hand, you're like, this is just how this fits, which it is really good for my hand. Um, it becomes a subjective thing. Do you, you know, want to pay more or less? Are you willing to pay more? For just a, a little bit. In fact, I'll give another example. The Mini Nightshade in S35VN and Carbon Fiber. Half the price of the Tylos. Is it as good a heat treat? Is it? You know, there's questions about the execution that I don't have the equipment to answer. It's also a much smaller knife. But the values there... There's, there's very little, the, the tightness of the seams when it comes to the carbon fiber, and even though there's that lip, it's still pretty strong. Um, the execution of the pocket clip, which is almost deep carry with the interior, the clean lines, just a couple of screws. The pocket clip covers a screw on here, a 
lanyard hole that's chamfered and does not and is not prioritized over the pocket clip at all. It does make it a little bit difficult if you're going to remove the non-swappable pocket clip to just roll lanyard. But it's a real, but it's such a thin knife in the pocket, it does a re has a really good pocket profile and it tilts itself into the seam quite well. Right? So if you're if if the pocket clip's going straight down your your on the outside of your pocket, this is going to push itself into the seam of your pocket which is a fairly safe way to go and it keeps it out of the way of other stuff in your pocket and that's really the cost of value is very subjective it's really hard to pit this against something like a kubi or a civivi because even arson color this is their higher end like if you want there's there's cjrb would be artisan cutlery's more more budget friendly end or brand. So this is a high-end knife. You, you should be knowing what you're going into when you go and look at some of the artisan cutlery. And that's really one of the expectations. I expected this to be good. I knew what I was getting. I knew, I mean, obviously I looked at the specs. It's titanium, it's carbon fiber, S35VN. Is it my favorite steel at this price point? No, I think S35VN has now become a mid-tier steel, even though it's on a lot. Its toughness is really good, but its edge retention is approximately D2, not that much more than CPM 154. You get more edge retention, but is it, you know, there's a value there where I think the 150 to 200 dollar range is really for what I consider S35 VN to be in. Same with S30 V, it's you get some trade offs. S45 VN is is up there, S90 V, Magna Cut Vanix. There's a lot of steels up there. I kind of feel the same way about M390 or 20 CV. It's starting to get to the point where there needs to be a good reason to me for it to be on a higher end knife because the toughness just isn't there for it. There's some edge retention and corrosion resistance, but the toughness you lose just isn't worth it to me for a higher end knife. Would I have any requests? A budget version, honestly. Usually you'll hear me say, hey, maybe something right in the hunt, you know, a little bit higher on the budget. Something like what Vosti did here. Give me something that's in between. And that's really kind of what this knife feels like. If there's anything it feels like this is just a little bit overpriced at about at 200 bucks, should be more like 150 um, given today's market. But it's really that, that's a that's a an interesting gap because a lot of different knives uh, straddle that. There's not a lot of machining, even though what's there is extraordinarily high quality. There's not a lot of jimping. Except on the blade, the titanium is is nicely, even if a little bit roughly cut. It's not bad. It's it's really there. I, I just don't have any requests except for maybe a slightly budget version, given the propensity for things like 154 CM uh, or anything like that with a, you know, I don't know, a contoured micarta liner lock or bolster lock like this. I don't know. There seems to be a way that this is that you can get a budget version. That might be the only request, but it's it's really hard to find too many faults. The single biggest downfall for this knife is its cost to value ratio. It's just a high end knife, so it brings it down for me into the like four and a half range, four to four and a half. It's very well done. There's subjective reasons to not like it but there's very few objective reasons to sit here and say this is a bad knife it's really not it's just a high cost with a high value and, and the overall is below some of the budget brands that in fact some of the ones that i have recently seen from Sencut, from civivi and all that stuff just don't have the same value and, and that kind of brings its score down in my mind just a little bit it's a very worthy knife, but you're paying a little bit more to get not nearly as much increase in value. It starts to hit that point, that uh, diminishing returns part where the graph starts to really level off for the amount of money you spend versus how much you get. You're starting to hit a little bit of that plateau area in, in this knife. And that's really its biggest fault. But I'll tell you, it has a great design that's well thought out. I like the aesthetics. It's a subjective thing, but I, I think the aesthetics are something that you can get behind. It's not too far out there it, while still being distinctive. You know what it is. You can almost see its purpose in its aesthetics, which is nice. The mechanics are great. One minor flaw only being part of the design, and that's that little corner on the uh, carbon fiber. That's probably the single 
only detriment I can find when it comes to the design aesthetics and mechanics. But as far as it being a really, really good EDC that's well thought out, EDC knife that's well thought out and intended, it does that with flying colors. And there's not a whole lot to ask for more. Um, you know, maybe a different blade steel at this price range. There's there's a couple of nitpicky things, but there's nothing really that stands out that goes, wow, this would just make this such a better knife. There's really not a whole lot there that I would say I can go, oh, this would make it just so much better. It would be something I might, I might prefer that just isn't available, but it's still a good knife. That puts it at four and a half stars on this. It's a recommendable knife, but it's it's a subjective one. You, you gotta want it. You gotta want this kind of design. You've gotta if you've tried any of the Ma Dylan Mallory designs before, you may have felt this. You know the angle, the way that it fits in the hand, the way it works, is very very interesting and comfortable. And for some hands, it's gonna work better than others. Just like a lot of knives. And. That's really hard to hard to beat. So four and a half stars. An outstanding EDC, EDC knife that's on the higher end. Which really is its its biggest, I don't want to call it a fault, but it's its biggest downgrade on the score is that its cost to value ratio is sort of plateauing at that $200 mark. It uh it's it's you can find these on Artisan Cutlery, probably some uh other other websites, but it is a great knife, it's just a higher end one. Hard, hard to really complain too much, quite honestly. Again, a budget version might be the only request I have. I'm not a VG10 fan or an 8CR13. VG10 is not my favorite. Still, it's just not that bad. Uh, I, I, I put it close to somewhere in between 9CR18 and 154CM. I personally like 154CM better. Uh, it is my favorite. 154CM is probably tied with for a uh, well heat treated 14 c 28 n as one of my favorite but as my favorite budget steel those are probably my two a, a 60 to 61 uh 14 c 28 n and a around a 60 uh 154 cm with good heat treating to keep the carbides small are probably my two favorite budget steels though to get them that well heat treated it's rarely a budget but this one has S35VN particle steel, a high flat grind, extremely well apexed, and a well executed design with really hydraulic action that just, you, the harder you, sh it's linear in how hard you shake with how far it goes. So it's very easy to judge both by look and by feel, which is nice. Top of the line, four and a half stars, highly recommended. In fact, I'm going to end this video here. This has been the review of the Artisan Cutlery Tylos here on A Dose of Juice. So go ahead, take this video, watch it twice. Comment as much as you like. Be mindful of side effects. Remember to like and subscribe. This has been your Dose of Drew. I am said Drew, and you guys have a great rest of your night.